I'm sorry for not posting this video earlier. I just needed time to process the information and I honestly don't even feel qualified to speak about this. However, as a Catholic who's chosen to share a bit about my life, I do feel called to talk briefly about this. I'm sure you already know, but in the early 2000s, the abuse within the Catholic Church by clergy came to light in Boston. Recently, Theodore McCarrick resigned because of his abuse of seminarians. Seminarians are young men preparing to join the priesthood. Over 30 Chilean bishops have offered their resignations for their involvement in sexual abuse. Also Australia. And most shockingly, a 900-page report by the Grand Jury of Pennsylvania was released detailing the sexual abuse within the Catholic Church from the 70s and 80s mostly, as well as the details of a systematic cover-up of that abuse. This has just been so heartbreaking to read. I can't get these survivors' stories out of my mind, images of what happened to them. These crimes are so disgusting, and I cannot imagine the pain that these survivors have. I don't personally know anyone who's been sexually abused by a priest, but there are people in my life who have been sexually abused, either by a family member or someone close to the family. And all forms of abuse are terrible, physical, verbal, emotional, but sexual abuse is a total violation of a person's entire being. In my last video, I talked about how we can't be entertained by someone stripping the dignity of another, whether that be in fighting or gossip on TV. But sexual abuse and rape, that is the ultimate stripping of dignity of another person. And it makes me so sad that some of these survivors associate the word God with abuse because these criminals came into the Catholic Church and fooled everyone, fooled everyone to believe that they were men of God. I know God is hurt, offended, and angry that such criminals would abuse innocent children in his name. It makes me think of Our Lady of Fatima when she appeared to those children in Portugal. She did tell them that people often go to hell for sins of the flesh. And she showed those children hell. They said they might have died from the sight. It was so horrific. But Mary promised the children that they were going to heaven, and that's how they were able to see hell and be okay. So Catholics do believe that there is a hell. Jesus talked about hell often. But we don't claim to know who is there or who's going there. But we know about divine mercy and divine justice. And a grown man raping a child in the name of God, I cannot think of a worse crime. I know the church has never been perfect right from the start. Out of the 12 apostles, one of the hand-picked apostles, hand-picked by Jesus, was Judas who betrayed Jesus. So that's 8% of the early church that Jesus started. Today, the abuse within the Catholic Church is estimated to be around 4%, which I read is around or less than the average amount of sexual abuse in the population. However, this is the church that Jesus Christ started. One act of sexual abuse is one too many. Someone who has been sexually abused, especially as a child, will be forever negatively affected by that abuse in every part of their lives. The early church father, St. John Chrysostom, said 1700 years ago, the road to hell is paved with skulls of erring priests, with bishops as their signposts. 800 years ago, St. Francis heard the command to rebuild my church, which is in ruins. I think the way to rebuild the church is to hold these priests and bishops accountable. 
Since a lot of this abuse happened in the 70s and 80s, a lot of these priests have already passed. But the priests who are still alive need to be held accountable. So we need statutory reform so that they can go to trial. I've linked below a petition to eliminate statutes of limitation in sexual abuse cases below. Change.org. Definitely go down and sign it. Also, what is so despicable is that these priests got away with this abuse because bishops protected them and moved them church to church. These bishops need to be held accountable. Pope Francis said that there will be zero tolerance regarding sexual abuse and sexual abuse cover-ups within the Catholic Church. I have what he said below, and we need to hold the church to that. I have the United States Papal Nuncio's email address and mailing address below. The Papal Nuncio is our link to Pope Francis, an ambassador for the U.S. to Rome. I think all of the laity, if you're new to Catholicism, the laity is just the non-religious of the church, so people like me. I think the laity really need to express to the clergy that we demand a zero tolerance policy. Cardinal DiNardo, the president of the USCCB, said that bishops need to be held to the highest standard of accountability and transparency. Apparently he has a plan and he is going to bring it to Pope Francis, but he hasn't released that plan to us. We can also write to him and tell him that we are expecting zero tolerance and what he already promised us, the highest standard of accountability and transparency. So if you write to Cardinal Donardo or our papal nuncio, I would just encourage you to be charitable. If you write, you're all going to hell, the Catholic Church doesn't know Jesus, etc., that letter is going to go in the trash. If you write, I understand that the majority of the clergy are holy men doing God's work. However, the criminals that have been abusing children and the criminals who have protected those abusers need to be held accountable. If you write that, I think our concerns will be heard. The USCCB's annual conference is coming up this November in Baltimore, Maryland, and there will be a Silence Stops Now rally. This rally is to express that we, the laity, demand accountability and transparency. Anyone in the church who has abused or who has protected an abuser needs to certainly resign, needs to pay the price and ideally needs to go to trial. If we can't get the statutes of limitation for sexual abuse eliminated, I think some other trial can be set up within the church. I don't know, send your ideas to Cardinal DiNardo and the Papal Nuncio. If you want to attend the rally or sign the petition, I have that information linked below. It's thebishopsnew.com. I'm just going to finish this video with one message of hope which is that the Catholic Church has changed since the early 2000s, and now I know children are safe. Anyone in the church, whoever comes in contact with children, has to take a course on sexual abuse. In addition to that course, we get monthly mini trainings and we have to answer questions at the end. These mini trainings keep sexual abuse in your mind always. The most recent training that I did was about keeping that boundary with children so that anyone who does want to groom a child for abuse will be more easily detected. It will set off red flags in the child's mind. A theoretical example, if a child wanted to sit on my lap while I was playing the piano, I would not let that child sit on my lap. Even though I love the girls in my children's choir and I want to be a source of love and support for them, that is not an appropriate way for me to show love. I would just tell that girl, oh, you're such a big girl. Why don't you sit in the chair next to me? You're so strong and independent. You don't want to sit on anybody's lap. I don't know if that's the best thing to say. I still am working on those scenarios in my own mind to be prepared if it happens but I know that I will not allow inappropriate touch. 
That way, if a youth minister or a priest or any other adult in the church says, hey, why don't you come sit on my lap? That child might have a red flag from me because I said no. Also, I just straight out talk to my girls in my children's choir. I tell them, your body is exactly that. It's your body. It is not anyone else's body. And if anyone touches you and makes you feel uncomfortable, you get out of there because that's your body. It's not their body. Also, rules are set in place in church now. No adult is ever to be alone with a child in church, ever. I will say at the end of rehearsal, I have been alone with a child because their parent has been late to pick them up. When that happens though, I open the doors wide and we either wait in the hallway where lots of people are walking by, or you know, if they're still in the rehearsal room eating snacks, I will keep a very big distance away from them and I'll be picking up pencils just so that child can learn that that is what's normal. A respectful distance, not sitting close and touching. Also, doors need to be open when adults are with children. In my case, my children's choir, you know, sometimes we sing annoying warm-ups, mommy made me mash my M&Ms, so to not disrupt everyone working at the church, I will close the doors sometimes, but there are windows. So anyone walking by can just peek in and see that we're singing annoying vocal warm-ups. Also today, if any priest said, oh, why don't I take little Johnny to the rectory? Red flags, alarm bells would just go off in every adult's mind in the church. I read one story from the Pennsylvania Grand Jury Report where a young boy was interested in joining the priesthood possibly one day, and he was very young. I don't remember his age, but not even a preteen yet for sure. And he was allowed to spend the night with a priest in the rectory. That abuse is the fault of that priest 100% and nobody else's. But at least today, that would never happen. I don't know what was going on in the 70s and 80s. I think it's great, you know, if a child is interested in becoming a priest, a dentist, a lawyer, that's great for them to meet with someone of that profession, but with another adult. Their parent or other family member should be there as well, obviously. And they should obviously never spend the night. If you are interested in the programs through Virtus, which is what the Catholic Church uses, I have that linked below. I think it's a great program. I believe the Boy Scouts are using that program. Hopefully more and more organizations will start using Virtus or other programs similar to it, gymnastics, Boy Scouts, schools, because sexual abuse is much more prevalent than people realize. I read that one in 10 children will be abused before age 18. There are more than 10 girls in my children's choir and that just is so heartbreaking. So I continue to talk to them about their bodies and how their bodies belong to them and nobody else they might roll their eyes at me, but I am just praying that I protect them. If you have been sexually abused, look below and check out snapnetwork.org. It is a great resource. You can connect with other survivors, counselors. So many resources are there. I'm about to cry, so I need to end this video. I had a lot of plans for great Catholic content, and I will definitely get that out there soon, but my next couple videos uh, might be pretty lighthearted because this was just a really heavy topic that needs to be talked about, but we all have to take care of ourselves emotionally, of course. The church needs our prayers. Pray for the church and consider attending the rally in Baltimore, signing these petitions, and writing a letter to Cardinal DiNardo and our papal nuncio. This is Kristen, your average everyday Catholic, signing off.